Well, it's serendipitous that uh, Mr. Haven is here with us, the producer and star of Amerageddon. And then we also have Mr. Stone here with us. Uh, now, Mr. Stone, I I'm normally clamoring to get him on the broadcast, Roger Stone. Today, he's got stuff so important he wants on the broadcast. So I don't I think I've seen him this uh, animated uh, in a while. He's, he's still stone cold over there. But Roger Stone is our guest. Gary Haven uh, is our guest uh, till the end of the hour uh, as well. Uh, so much going on, uh, Trump coming out, organizing against election fraud, and a lot of polls going back even with Hillary. Uh, Trump predicting landslides in, in um, uh, many of these battleground states. We're going to ask Roger Stone why he thinks that is. I know some of the internal polls with just private groups I talk to say Trump's actually ahead and that this is all just, just media hoax with 15% more Democrats being sampled by Reuters and others. Uh, but I know Roger Stone will give me his real take on this, unlike a lot of other politicos, an uh, advisor to at least four presidents, uh, w worked for uh, nine different campaigns uh, for president, uh, and um, somebody who can really give us the inside scoop on what's happening. I know also the cover of the New York Times this morning, because I got up at 6 a.m. and was reading it, secret ledger in Ukraine's list, cash for Donald Trump's campaign chief. I don't know what Roger's going to stay here, but I've, I've followed this closely. That's like saying, oh, we have a secret list of somebody that paid their electric bill. It's no secret that his business partner of decades, uh, Mr. Manafort, ha has worked for the previous elected president of Ukraine. But they put this headline out and act like, oh, it's mysterious. Oh, it's bad to ignore all the admitted evidence of Hillary giving up one fifth of the U.S. uranium supply to the Russians for thirty five million dollars. That's been in the Wall Street Journal. So there's WikiLeaks has said no real connections in our hacks to Trump and the Russians. Hillary, it's amazing, but not as bad as the Chinese and the Saudi Arabians. So uh, joining us till the end of the transmission is Roger Stone of StoneZone.com. Good to have you, my friend. Great to be here, Alex. Um, you kind of read my mind because this is precisely what I want to address. The New York Times should be ashamed of themselves. This story, if you read it carefully, indicates that there that Manafort is not the subject of an investigation, that there is no evidence of secret campaign uh, or, or financial transfers to him. Uh, this is a nothing burger. All the news that's fit to print embellished with a Clinton tin. There's no story here. This was manufactured news. Now, juxtapose that with the New York Times failure to delve into the current criminality at the Clinton Foundation. The Clintons have set up a Clinton Foundation Canada that is unregulated, where millions of dollars from Mr. Joustra, who purchased the uranium concession, have flowed. You know how much of that has been reported in the New York Times? None. So uh, this is a manufacture, which I can reveal here, is done on the basis of research that was conducted in Ukraine by Sidney Blumenthal using heavy-handed private detectives. They have dug for months on Manafort and they have found nothing. There is no investigation. Manafort is not a target. The scrawled note that is in the headline tracks to no bank transfer records. There is no proof of any payment to Manafort. It's a Canard. But expanding on that, he has been an international consultant to hundreds of different groups. And so I don't care if he's been a consultant to an elected government. Uh, it's, it's George Soros running around overthrowing governments. Well, and he has never worked for the Ukrainian government or for the Russian government. So as he has As you point out, Alex, the whole involvement of Putin and the Russians is a canard. Let's be very clear. The DNC hacked emails involving the theft from Bernie Sanders and the role of Deborah Wasserman Schultz was hacked by Crucifer 2 and posted online five weeks ago. When it got no traction, he took those documents to WikiLeaks, they put it, them out, and they received substantial traction. No involvement by the Russians, no involvement by Putin. Uh, the whole idea that Manafort and Trump are somehow aligned with Putin, uh, working with Putin, this is a falsehood. Well, I've now confirmed from our no. NSA sources, not just Benny on air, but the word is that it's been tracked. It is U.S. sources 
in intelligence leaking most of this now because they're so concerned about Hillary. And I have had the Secret Service, uh, Mr. Stone, directly give us intel confirming her medical issues now, which I tell you is one of the scariest things I've ever done because I know how serious this is. Yeah, look, I think that, uh, that the, uh, her medical issues are yet another example of the New York Times shirking their responsibilities and essentially writing nothing. But isn't the New York Times owned by a Mexican kingpin now? I mean, I mean, let's get real here. No, it is owned by Carlos Slim, who is the largest single donor to the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative. <laughs> That's who owns a, a controlling interest in the New York Times, which is why you have this assault on Paul Manafort, which is really about attacking Trump, instead of any investigative journalism about the corruption of the Clintons. Th this is disgraceful. And frankly, I never heard of the reporters whose names are on this story, but they should be ashamed of themselves because they admit no government official says Manafort has been charged with wrongdoing in the story. He is not the subject of Well, why don't we just have an article saying that they found the, the uh, yellow cake, Niger uranium, at Paul Manafort's house? Well, what's particularly uh, disturbing about this is that within seconds of it being posted last night, uh, it was tweeted online by Corey Lewandowski. So now I think it is fair to, say, fair to say that Lewandowski is in league with Sidney Blumenthal and the Clintons, and in this case, uh, with the New York Times, to discredit. And, and he hurt works with CNN. Wow. To hurt the campaign. Pathetic. Really pathetic. So, so now you used to tell me privately you thought Lewandowski was an idiot. You're saying now you think he's been an operative all along or just now? Well, why would you do something detrimental to the Trump campaign? Why would you spread complete disinformation? Uh, unless, of course, you're putting yourself ahead of Trump, which is what I think he has done uh, in, in this instance. Look, Alex, uh, as you know, last late last week, uh, shortly after it became known on this program uh, that I have had some back-channel communication with WikiLeaks and Julian Assange uh, regarding the fact that everything that Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills the Clinton aides thought that they erased on Hillary's illegal server is in the possession of WikiLeaks. Probably also the Chinese, the Russians, the Saudis, and the Israelis, but most definitely in the hands of WikiLeaks. This is political dynamite. Shortly thereafter, as you know, I myself was hacked. It's far worse than I reported last week. My personal in, uh, email accounts my business email accounts, my bank account was accessed, my websites were accessed, my social media feeds were accessed. Two of my associates who work with me, one based in Texas, one based in California, both hacked at the same time. So a total data scoop to find out who you're talking to. 30, uh, 30 years worth of political contacts erased. Email uh, contacts erased. Sabotage. Documents uh, that I was working on, research I was working on, erased. Now, fortunately, all of this is backed up in a server in New York, and therefore all they've done is make me more determined to bring them down and put me back about four or five days. Well, Trump's coming to town in a few weeks. I hope you'll come here so <coughs> you and I can meet, uh, obviously, here in Austin, get you down here, Roger. Uh, I've got Mr. Haben here who was really looking forward to speaking to you sometime about things he wants to do, working with the campaign, and, and pop him with any questions you've got because it's always great to have a wild card question, uh, Gary. But specifically, when he says, we know if we don't win Pennsylvania that we've been stolen, is that obviously because the internal polling shows he's ahead, he's having giant crowds, the Democrats say we're all for you. Most Democrats I talk to say they're for Trump. Uh, they see right through Hillary. She can't even get 176 people at her rallies now. He gets 30,000. I mean, it really seems like they're putting out these polls to create the hoax that he's behind so that people think he's going to lose. Uh, what's the real numbers right now, as best you can tell, Mr. Stone? Well, I think you're exactly right, Alex. It was my intention today to publish, publish a major uh, paper on exactly how this election can be rigged uh, and where exactly I expect it, it to happen. To be clear, both parties have been involved in machine rigging. It's the party in power in the given states that will rig the machines, and therefore Pennsylvania and Virginia are two states that must be monitored closely. What do I mean by that? Very simply, we need to conduct exit polls so if the difference between the results, the official results from the machines, and the exit polls are different, 
we will know that this election has been rigged. That has to be done. I'm going to unveil a plan shortly to do it. <clears throat> but the hacking of my email, frankly, put me behind a day or two. No big deal because the struggle continues. By the way, I, I don't think it's internal sabotage, but the link that they put is so hidden you can't even find it. It took us days to find the link <laughs> on DonaldJTrump.com for volunteers to sign up for that. So we're sending out a mass email, and we're going to post it in the next few minutes to InfoWars dot com with the actual url where people can go sign up in fact it's gone live share this link to help trump stop rigged elections trump calls on americans to become election observers there's a video i shot pointing out that for dinner with trump or to donate to trump or all this stuff is literally hidden and inaccessible by any link it took data mining roger to find this on the site so i just want to let the campaign know about that yeah, I think it's going to be very important to have every polling place covered. Uh, and the Trump campaign uh, is going to do some of that. Citizens for Trump, the fabulous grassroots organization that co-sponsored our rally uh, in Cleveland is going to do some of that. Uh, we're ramping up StopTheSteal.com again uh, for this specific purpose. Uh, these machines can easily be hacked. It takes a $15 device that you can buy at Best Buy to allow you to vote multiple times. Sure, I mean, the audience knows that, our audience, but, but I mean, why do you think Obama came out and flipped out and said, what's a rigged election? Didn't he uh, put his foot in his mouth with that one? Well, he said it was ridiculous. You see, what they're trying to do is discredit uh, any claim that this election is not honest up front. The fact that Obama says the entire concept of rigging the election is ridiculous convinces me all the more that they will attempt to do it. Well, they just tried to steal the nomination and did from Sanders. Uh, Gary, jump in here with some questions. You say there's a lot you want to ask, Mr. Stone. Yeah. Gary, go ahead. Hey, Roger. Good to, good to see you. I've been trying to connect here for a while. Uh, you know, you mentioned something really interesting uh, uh, with the Clinton Foundation, that it was first uh, founded in Canada. And uh, uh, I wanted to add something to that. Uh, Canadian law allows that foundation in Canada to not reveal the donors. And then, of course, they transfer the money into the U.S. where it's safe from being revealed. So obviously criminal. If I did this, they arrest me. Yeah, it, it is and so. Done, and it, yes, they've done the exact same thing in a number of other jurisdictions. Look, the Clinton Foundation, Gary, as you know, is not a charitable organization. It's a slush fund for grifters. Yeah. Uh, it is a vehicle for the facilitation of multi-million dollar bribes that were paid to the Clintons in return for governmental favors. The Russians paid, the Chinese paid, the Saudis paid, uh, and they all got something. It's a classic case. Let me raise this. Why is the media, I mean, if I thought there was a ceiling on hysteria, let's say that's a 10, they've now gone to a 30. I mean, it is into the world panic, run around, just lying. I mean, it, it's, it's got a backfire on them. Are they? I mean, are they panicking? Panicking because they know Trump's really ahead in their own internal polling. Because if he was so far behind, like they claim, they wouldn't be running around like it's the end of the world. No, I think they're panicking because they understand that should he be elected, it's the end of the old order. It's the end of the two-party duopoly. It's the end of the neocons controlling our government. It's the end of the erosion of our civil liberties. It's the end of of uh, debt and massive spending. It's the, it's end, the end of, of the new bailout. world order. That's what they say yeah. in the Washington Post. It's the end of bailouts on Wall Street for the crooks and swindlers. Um, it would open up a, a whole new era of economic growth and prosperity as Trump trimmed uh, regulations and formulated tax policy that would be uh, job friendly, job creation friendly. So he challenges uh, the two-party duopoly and 30 years of bad decisions. Sure, I want, uh, I, 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 okay. I want Gary to jump in here with some more questions because I, 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 I love the wild card, but other tidbits, <laughs> Roger Stone, that folks should be aware of right now. Uh, what are you concerned about? Well, my number one concern, of course, is this effort by the mainstream media to call this election over in August. It's not even Labor Day, and uh, you had this major New York Times piece that has uh, the Trump campaign in disarray, the candidate dispirited. Uh, He's giving it, up. It's all over. This is yeah, exactly. like, this is like taking what happened with Ben Carson to the next level. Uh, I mean, shouldn't we make them make the point that they're staging a, a hoax here? Well, it's not only a hoax, but anybody who reads this stuff understands that that is not Trump. Trump is a fighter. Trump never quits things midstream. That's not him. He won this nomination 
uh, in a hostile takeover of the Republican Party. He never he will, settles lawsuits. He loves it. No, yeah, he's a fighter. So the idea that he is going to quit, that whole MacGuffin um, was first put out by the Republican National Committee uh, and then kind of picked up by the Clinton spin machine as a way to dampen the enthusiasm of both donors uh, and uh, volunteers. Uh, this election's far from over. You have a number of debates that are going to be pivotal. Uh, Donald Trump would like to see uh, the minor party candidates, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson, in those debates. I predict Hillary will never agree to that. Uh, the Presidential Commission on Debates is not appointed by the president, is not a commission, and it's most definitely not about debate. It's about limiting debate. They will want these debates at a time that almost nobody can see them. They will want a format that will not allow Trump to cross-examine Hillary. Now, she hasn't had a press conference in 250, what, 6, 57 I was days? about to say, she clearly can't even hardly stand up now. Uh, I was watching today with Biden sitting there. She looks like she's about to die. How is she going to be in an hour and a half, two-hour debate? I think Trump should push for the longest possible. And he should, he should keep a list of all the questions she has failed to answer these many months. I can think of... Yeah, I would say, since you never had press conferences, let me ask you about Benghazi. Let me ask right. you about your foundation. Right. Exactly. And, and then, I mean, they'll probably put Megyn Kelly as the moderator of all three. Well, so the point is you have these debates. Then you also have... Let's give the break. Uh, ...this devastating information from, uh, from WikiLeaks, which I expect to continue. So what I've seen online, uh, the trolls that work for David Brock at correct the record and uh, uh, media matters. Yeah, they tell you a lot about what they troll with. What are they worried about? Oh, it's they're constantly attacking you and I personally. It's all name calling. Uh, and now they're trying to discredit Assange because they know he has the goods. It's all trolls. It's all astroturf. It's all BS. By the way, both those organizations, correct the record and media matters for America are operating illegally uh, in violation of their legal charter under the IRS. So um, it is typical of the Clinton uh, types, throw names, call names, personal character assassination. They can't refute my book, The Clinton's War on Women, which you can get right here at the InfoWars store. They're not able to refute it on a factual basis, so they engage in name calling. Uh, Why are they? Because it is, it, I mean, I use the word surreal to see CNN, MSNBC every night attacking you and I. <laughs> um, and, and they're not doing it because we're discredited. They're doing it because they're so scared of the fact that it's our talking points that are reality-based that Trump is talking about wherever he's getting them and that is so effective against them. I mean, why are they so scared of us? It's, it's bizarre to always be front and center in the middle of this. And Gary, jump at any time. Well, you guys are purveyors of truth. You know, Roger, uh, you, you, you laid out a really good argument of the difference between a Trump uh, presidency as opposed to these other guys. You know, uh, as a marketer, I'm always looking for reducing things to the ridiculous. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm tempted to say this is nationalism versus globalism. Uh, it, it, this it, is suicide versus life. Yeah. Is that, is, is, is that a, a viable argument or is that ridicule rich? First of all, I think it's an absolutely accurate and viable uh, argument for some less sophisticated voters. Perhaps it bears some explanation, but essentially the entire rise of Trump is a rejection of the policies that have brought this country. Trump is America fighting for its life. Trump is the last gasp if we don't take it. Trump is what you I were praying for, people. But Gary, I think, just put his finger on it. This is the globalists. Those who believe in the new world order, those who believe in regional government, uh, those who no longer believe in American sovereignty, American power versus the nationalists. They try to put a negative connotation on that. Trump loves America. He believes in the promise of America. He believes in the exceptionalism of America. He believes in American sovereignty and American power. Uh, and that's why the New York Times is attacking. They hate the American power part. <clears throat> they do not yeah, they like do. that because they've no, used they our power to parlay into world government. And now they think we're done with this like we're some old hooker. And, and no, that's not happening. It's just not happening.
Well, I'm 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 all for for having a simplistic approach because let's face it, we're we're fairly sophisticated in this area. We have time and and spent spent on it. Uh, but to, to get the attention of the average voter, you know, we can't be bombastic, uh, which is tempting to do because of our frustration. I am. Uh, but we need. <laughs> Actually, I was talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was about to say Trump bombastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. Sorry. Well, we we uh, I'd really like to see some smart marketing here because uh, th 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 there are so many things that are obvious now that we now and thanks to Trump we have permission to talk about the politically uh, incorrect. We have permission to talk about globalism and where that leads. I would have ads where I went. The Chinese president says we can't have Trump. The Saudi president says we can't have Trump. Or the Saudi leader. This leader says that one leader. What about you? I mean, I would just say like. But, you know, or what the, do the voters say? Or the Communist Party fully supports Hillary. Exactly. <laughs> Communist Party, you, I mean, every demon group on earth is against Trump. <laughs> this is a no-brainer for me. Uh, Roger? That's, that's about right. Uh, you know, I, I do think that this is going to continue because the mainstream media is not going to let up. They want this race to be over right now, probably because they know that Hillary doesn't have the stamina for the close. Let me That's point my out next question. I'm glad you brought that up. She's crawling. She's falling apart. She's degenerating. They're even starting to admit it in mainstream media. What are they planning then? I mean, are they going to replace her, have a fake uh, assassination attempt to make her a hero? They'll never replace her because the they is she. The Clintons are now in control of the Democratic Party. Many of my friends in the Democratic Party uh, are supporting her, not because they want to, but because they're afraid not to. The Clintons are famously vindictive, uh, and they keep score. Uh, additionally, however, you have Trump out last week doing four campaign events in one day. This guy's almost 70, but he is showing a Herculean personal stamina, working like a dog to win this election. She can barely stand up. Uh, she has continued to uh, eschew any questions about anything, her health, the Clinton Foundation, uh, and so uh, ISIS. Uh, last week, as you know, Trump landed a clean punch because uh, Obama and Hillary, as well as the Bush administration, are responsible for the rise of ISIS. Yes. Uh, and the mm -hmm. mainstream media attempted to ridicule Trump as if that is untrue. However, it is true. At a minimum, one would have to deny, indisputably, Hillary armed ISIS. And that is a stone-cold fact. And she created the vacuum and put them in charge and did everything else for them. So, from the internal polls of the research, what, what, I mean, is it, I mean, for me, I think there's this closeted group. I know there is that, it, you know, won't say they're voting for Trump. I think Trump's way ahead. I mean, I know we can't be overconfident here, but I think this illusion that Hillary's really ahead has to be defeated. Uh, I actually don't think that Trump is necessarily ahead. He may be down three or four points. Remember, polling is only good in the epicycle in which it is taken. The instant it's compiled, it is technically already obsolete because things are moving around. Voters are moving around. They are affected by the daily coverage of the race, both good and bad. So the numbers are always going to fluctuate. Is Hillary pulled out to some insurmountable lead? Absolutely not. Is Trump still even or leading in more than half of the swing states? Yes, he is. Is there any place in which he's now out of range other than reliably blue states where he never was going to win any place? The answer is no. So despite the fact that the mainstream media attempts to put this race away, to call it for Hillary in August, All right. Uh, it is just not. Uh, All right, Gary, yeah. have final question, and then uh, Roger Stone, any other points you need to make? Because we got about two minutes left. Yeah, you, you know, we, what's funny, we forgot about what he spoke about ISIS last week. That's huge. Huge courage. I just am yeah. so proud I support Trump. Yeah, you know, when uh, uh, I'm friends with Rand, Rand Paul, and, and during the debate, uh, he was being accused of being an isolationist, and he uttered the words, well, the first thing I would do is stop supporting ISIS. And then he shut up. And I told him uh, later, I said, why didn't you go down that trail? Uh, you know, what turned me on to ISIS being a, a, a CIA creation was when the weapons in Mosul were completely turned over. The vehicles, there were 2,500 sure. uh, armored uh, uh, Humvees with the keys left in the ignition. And, you know, and we had an aircraft carrier right out there in the Persian Gulf, could have sent two F-18s and destroyed it. Absolutely. It so that facts out. Roger Stone, 60 yeah. seconds, closing comments on that.
You know, what's particularly disturbing to me uh, was the way Katie Turr of NBC goes up on her Twitter feed and says Trump is wrong about ISIS. No, Katie, Trump is absolutely right about ISIS. Oh, well, that's right. I think they went too far because that's a known fact. And that's really shows the mainstream media is losing its power. Roger Stone, StoneZone.com. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon. Great to be here. Thanks, Alex. You bet. Let's talk on the phone this afternoon if you can. Gary Haven, the film, America Eden, available exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. Thank you for everything you've done, my friend. And I want to thank the audience and the great crew. Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central.